Here we go. It's gonna be a doozy. Strap yourselves in. Well, how's it going, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. I'm back here for another Doc Talk episode. Now, if you are unfamiliar with what Doc Talk is, it's usually where I sit on a dock and I talk. Today, we're actually in a yard talk or wood table talk, I don't know what it is, but basically this series when I sit down and I talk about the happenings in the fishing industry to keep you guys up to date with how basically this whole industry works. Anywhere from YouTube to products to companies to services, I want to keep you guys informed on bass fishing around the world. And boy has bass fishing been uh, in turmoil the past few weeks. So this video is going to focus on professional fishing. Now a lot of you guys watch this video might say, Tyler, I don't like the pros. I don't watch pro bass fishing. I don't watch Bassmaster, FLW. Uh, I watch YouTube. You guys are my pros. And while I appreciate that, while I appreciate you guys watching and um, being loyal fans of the YouTube crowd in general, that is not how the fishing industry works. And I know that may come as a surprise to some of you guys, but the fishing industry as a whole still doesn't like us. And that's not a diss to the industry, that is just the way that it's run. It is mostly an older industry that doesn't quite know what to do with YouTubers yet. There are a lot of people in the fishing you know, video space on YouTube that of course make awesome videos and are good promoters of companies, but then there are also some YouTubers as well that have burnt a lot of bridges in the industry and have kind of given YouTubers like myself and others, I hate to say it, but a bad name in the fishing industry. What I mean by industry is companies and services within the whole fishing realm of the world uh, that sponsor pros and sponsor YouTubers. And so if you guys don't really care about professional fishing and you want to click off this video, I'm going to say that you should care. And the reason is, like I mentioned, this industry is not run from a YouTuber perspective or point of view. This industry is run from the top down, from professionals, down to opens pros, down to weekend anglers, down to your recreational fishermen. And YouTubers, the, the industry is not exactly quite sure where to stick us yet. Really, everything is designed for and designed by pros. And that's the way that it's been for a long time. Uh, professional fishing has been the premier spot in the fishing industry. YouTube, I think, and social media fishing is kind of climbing into that space as well. But because bass fishing has been so big in the professional sphere for so long, that is what this video is going to be about. Now, if you already know all the details about these changes in professional bass fishing, you are up to date with bass fan, you know, wire to fish, all that jazz, feel free to skip to this time signature down here in the bottom or in the top. I don't know exactly where it's going to be, but skip there if you want to skip straight to my opinion on how this whole thing is shaking out. But for the rest of y'all, here we go. Now the first big nationwide bass fishing tournament, as I've discussed in previous videos, was held on Beaver Lake in June of 1967. I think Ray Scott held that tournament, and I think the grand prize was like $2,000. We'll kind of discuss more about that tournament later on in this video. But that was kind of the start of bass fishing. There's, there's, there's always been really two main bass fishing tournament circuits in America and often around the world, and that is Bassmaster, the BASS, Bass Anglers Sportsman Society, and FLW, stands for Forrest L. Wood, um, and that's basically been all there is. There's just two main bass fishing circuits and of course there's legendary pros on both sides. You've got people like Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston, uh, Kevin Van Dam, and of course more recent people like Scott Martin, uh, Brandon Palinick, Jordan Lee that have fished um, on, on both sides of the spectrum and so I'd say both tours have done an awesome job in engaging the fishing community over the years. Uh, and so of course with bass and FLW being the biggest, there's always been TV shows out there. Bass and FLW have had their own shows they've produced at the tournaments. But an organization came about in a TV show called Major League Fishing. This was created by Boy Duckett and several other very high-ranking, elite, older pros. Boy Duckett, I think Kelly Jordan was one, Alton Jones was one. And these pros basically wanted to create a tournament circuit uh, for a very select few guys in a quite odd format that had never been done before. So Major League Fishing was created around the idea of catch and release. So what they would do is they would put eight guys at one time in a four hour time period I think it was, put marshals on each one of their boats with iPads that they could put the weight in for each fish. And so every time a pro would catch a fish that was a legal fish, they would weigh the fish in the boat with the marshal, then release it straight back into the water and go back to fishing. And the whole goal is to catch the most possible weight of fish you can in a four hour time period to stay in the top four or the top two or win that hour or that four hour time slot. And this TV show took off fast. I have to say, it is probably my favorite TV show to watch if I am going to watch fishing on TV. It's Major League Fishing because of the amount of fish catches, excitement. Uh, every time you know a pro catches a fish, every other boat is the, the pro is told, "Hey, uh, you know Brandon Palin just got a two-pound, ten-ounce fish. He's now ahead of you." And so the drama that it creates is just so incredible, and that's why it was the highest trending show, the highest-rated show on Nielsen TV ratings, I think, for the past few years in a row. 
So Major League Fishing has been incredibly successful on the TV aspect of things, but it only included a few select pros that they chose from Bassmaster and FLW. I think it was only like 18 or 20 pros that would fish it kind of on the side. It wasn't part of their, um, I guess, main tournament winnings. That was either Bass or FLW. But Major League Fishing played a huge role in expanding kind of how content is played on TV. And so that's kind of the case for several years. You still had Bassmaster, which I'd say is the premier tour. You'd have FLW, which is big as well, but doesn't have quite as many big social media or sponsor related names. And then you had Major League Fishing, which is the biggest TV you know, name in the fishing industry. Until ICAST of this year, ICAST of 2018, I was standing, I believe I was next to the Strike King booth. I think I remember exactly where I was talking to Ronnie Moore, who's on Bass Live for Bass Nation, um, or for the Bassmaster, and Tim Little from Tactical Bassin, the big YouTube channel out of California, Tim and Matt. And I was talking to them and I believe Ronnie told us, hey, I just overheard a rumor that Major League Fishing might try to start a bass fishing tour of their own. And there was no details out. Ronnie just told us, hey, it might happen this year, it might happen next year or a few years down the road. But I think Major League Fishing is trying to make their own tournament trail. And I was like, cool. I don't know much about it, but it sounds like a cool idea. And so kind of all summer and throughout the early fall, we were waiting on Major League Fishing to announce any sort of details on a tour if, they, if and when they were going to make one. And so fast forward to late, not I said late fall, I'd say if you live up north, it's late fall. Uh, it's the fall of this year and Major League Fishing officially announced its tour called the Bass Pro Tour. And so here are the details. Hopefully the numbers that I spew out make a lot of sense to y'all. It's a lot of info, but let's get started. And all of these links will be linked below as well. They're mostly from Bass Fan, which is a big publication of bass fishing news in the industry. And then Wired to Fish, which is, as you guys know, I write for them. They're an awesome publication as well. And so Major League Fishing announced that their tour was going to consist of 80 pros 60 or so invite from the Bassmaster Elite Series and 20 or so invite from the FLW Tour. And so what this is going to consist of is an industry leading media exposure of more than 850 hours of television coverage and 350 hours of live streaming of the anglers fishing, which I, I, I had the link somewhere, I can't find it now, but that is leaps and bounds more than what any other professional fishing tour had ever done is have 850 hours of television. I saw something about reaching like 300 million people around the world with the story of bass fishing through Major League Fishing. So that is, that is a huge thing in itself. Uh, and then of course, the only way to get anglers to switch is to help them make more money. I've heard people say, oh, if somebody leaves Bassmaster or FLW to make more money somewhere else, they're just a selfish fisherman. They don't really care about the fishing. I hate to break it to you, but fishing is a business. What I do here on YouTube is a business. I have to make decisions that reflect what I want my business to, or how I want my business to be run. And oftentimes that requires making decisions that as a traditional fisherman, I wouldn't want to make. And so Bassmaster Elite Series pros, FLW pros, they have to make decisions to feed their families. This is their job. This is not just them going out and fishing. It's just like every other professional sport. They have to make a decision that is best for them to make a living. And so Major League Fishing announced huge increases the amounts of payouts they are allowed to you know offer to anglers for tournaments. So MLF is going to consist of eight tour events across the country at lakes they have not specified yet and then I think there's going to be one tour championship as well. So the payout for the eight regular season events is going to be hundred thousand for first place, seventy thousand for second, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty-eight, all the way down to twentieth or twenty thousand dollars for tenth place. And then 11th through 40th, which is the rest of the half of the field, is $10,000, and 41st through 80th is $0. So it kind of follows the same format as uh, Bassmaster, where the, the, the top half of the field gets some sort of money back, uh, some sort of check, and the bottom half doesn't get anything. And so the total event you know, prize package is $710,000, with a field size of 80. Then, if you are lucky enough to make it to the championship, where the field size is 30 anglers, the total prize for that is $1.2 million. They are bumping back the first place for the MLF Bass Pro Tour Championship to half a million dollars, 500,000. Second place is 100,000, 80,000, all the way down to 26,000 for 10th place. Everybody gets paid 11th through 20th is 20 grand and 21st through 30th is 10 grand. And so that is a huge increase in the amount of money that pros can make on the Major League Fishing Tour as opposed to Bass or FLW. But that is actually not all the tournaments that Major League Fishing is, is giving their anglers an opportunity to fish. Uh, those anglers are also, throughout the year, getting the opportunity to qualify for, I believe it is the MLF Cups and the MLF World Championship. And so the Cups also have a total payout of 554000 for a field size of 30, and the MLF World Championship has a payout of 700000 for a field size of 16. So there are so many additional tournaments that you can fish with absolutely insane payouts. I mean, if let, let's say you were to win every single big tournament Major League Fishing offers throughout the year. 
in terms of once, not every single time. The World Championship, 200 grand. The MLF Cup, 100 grand. The Championship, 500 grand. And the regular season events, 100 grand. You can win almost a million dollars off of just winning four tournaments. Th that's incredible. That's never been done before in the fishing industry. Uh, it's, it's wild. And so as I've mentioned, uh, Major League Fishing is, is brand new. And there's no like feeder system for Major League Fishing yet to get anglers in there. So they are doing purely a selective system. So they are selecting 60 or so of the best, or what they deem the best, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro and 20 of the best FLW Series Pros. And so if any of the guys that are watching my video that are on FLW or Bass didn't get an invite, I'm not saying you're not a great angler, you're not the best. I'm just saying Major League Fishing chose the people they chose. Uh, I doubt any pros watch my videos, but if you do, no hard feelings. And so the Major League Fishing tournaments are going to work just like the TV show does, where it is a total weight format. As I'll talk about here in a second, the Bassmaster Tour and FLW still are going to function as a five fish limit format, where you get your five biggest bass and bring them to weigh in. MLF is actually getting rid of the weigh-ins to my knowledge, and they are having live cameras and, and marshals on every single pro's boat, and everything is basically live streamed to each other. So all the anglers, just like the TV show, know exactly the weights they have and the weights their buddies have that are fishing against them, which I definitely think is pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about kind of the, the critiques of Major League Fishing and what some people are saying about it later on in this video, uh, but I'm definitely a fan of this format. Now the difference between the format of Major League Fishing right now and what is going to be next year and in the future with the Bass Pro Tour is that it is not just a four or eight hour time slot where you have to beat all your, you know, the guys that are against you and finish in the top four to make it onto the next round. It is actually an 80 angler field with I believe two full practice days and three days of competition. So there's no longer, oh I have to catch a whole bunch of small fish right now to, uh, you know, bump myself up and just stay above the cut. You have a three day format. So I guarantee there's going to be big fish caught, I'll kind of discuss that later on in the video. But that is basically all that Major League Fishing is, a huge shakeup in the bass fishing world. So of course, if you were Bassmaster and you heard that MLF is going to attempt to take the majority of your elite pros, you are going to have some sort of, of comeback or some sort of rebuttal to try to keep your pros, and that's exactly what the Bassmaster Elite Series did. And so in response to Major League Fishing announcing this, uh, they released the 2019 Elite Series field size will be cut down from 110 to 80 anglers. The new format of the Elite Series features three no entry fee events that will pay out $1 million each. So they're actually also bumping up their payouts based on sponsors. Uh, the Toyota Bassmaster Texas Fest is no entry fee. Uh, the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship is no entry fee. And the Bassmaster Classic is no entry fee as well. And so that's definitely cool to see Bassmaster stepping up. The entry fees total is going to be slashed by $5,375. So now the total is $43,000 for entry fees, not almost 50 grand for entry fees. So that means that every angler is guaranteed over the total amount of tournaments to they say make, but really save, it's kind of opportunity cost, save $23,500 over the course of the year. But also as an incentive to keep Elite Series anglers from leaving the Elite Series to go to Major League Fishing, Bass is also offering a $20,000 one-time credit to anglers who competed on the 2018 Elite Series season and who want to stay, which is huge. I mean, if you are a current Elite Series angler and they are offering you $20,000 right now to stay, that's pretty tempting. And that pays for half of your entry fees for the entire year, which definitely helps for expenses. And also through my connections at Bassmaster, uh, you know, the Elite Series, Wired to Fish, and uh, watching the Ike live show, it became apparent that a lot of rumors were spreading around that Bassmaster may have been able to pay certain pros uh, either 20, you know, the $20,000 stipend, no entry fees total, so that would be about $43,000. I heard they were offering some pros $50,000 and some $200,000 for a one-time payment to stay on the Elite Series, which, is, is nuts. If I was to be a top tier fisherman like Palomic, Justin Lucas, Kevin Van Dam, and they offer me $200,000 to stay on the Elite Series, that would be awfully, awfully hard to leave. And so to combat what Major League Fishing is doing with their increased you know, television coverage, Bassmaster TV is also kind of revamping their show to make it more educational, focusing on teaching, but also showing more and more fish catches per episode. The Bassmaster just ended with a quote, we want the world to know the bass and our incredible st stable of sponsors are committed to growing the sport of bass fishing. Ray Scott launched the sport and industry 50 years ago with the creation of bass, and we will continue to push this vision forward for the next 50 years. So that's kind of Bass's response. Now we're going to move to FLW's response. There was nothing. FLW put out a press release that literally said, we're not going to change anything. We're not going to change entry fees. We're not going to change payouts. Everything's going to be the same. I think their official statement was, 
We are committed to a sustainable model that serves our 50,000 plus tournament anglers from FLW Tour through high, FLW High School Opens, in addition to our millions of fans who visit FLWFishing.com and social media channels every year. Now this didn't sit well with the anglers, so FLW kind of revamped their entry fee format a little bit, but really FLW is staying the exact same. Five fish format, weigh-ins just like Bassmaster is having with the five fish format weigh-ins. Major League Fishing is really the only one that's changing things up that much. Now at this point you may be asking yourself, what pros did MLF decide to choose from the Elite Series or invite from the Elite Series and the FLW Tour to join their new Bass Pro Tour? And we have almost the complete list. Now by the time I film this video, I think we're still waiting on 20 or so anglers left to decide between FLW or I guess where they're currently at and or switching to uh, the Bass Pro Tour. But we have a full list, kind of an order of who has announced they are deciding to leave their prospective tour to head to Major League Fishing. And it's a huge list and it consists of a lot of big names. So I'm gonna read down the list of Elite Series anglers and FLW anglers. <sighs> it's, I mean, it's daunting. Edwin Ebers, Timmy Horton, Skeet Reese, Boyd Duckett, Marty Robinson, Greg Hackney, Chris Lane, Alton Jones, Alton Jones Jr., Jeff Crete, Randall Tharp, Gerald Spohr, Fletcher Shryock, Dave Lefebvre, Andy Montgomery, Kelly Jordan, Mike McClelland, Jared Littner, Roy Hawk, John Murray, Ott Defoe, Brent Chapman, Jacob Wheeler, Keith Poche, David Walker, Cliff Crochet, Jacob Poroznik, Russ Lane, Greg Vinson, Brandon Coulter, Mark Davis, Dean Rojas, Terry Scroggins, Gerald Swindle, that was a huge one, Aaron Martins, James Elam, Randy Howell, another huge one, Bobby Lane, Takahiro Omore, uh, Brett Height, Fred Rambanis, Luke Clausen, Kevin Van Dam, which was a huge, huge name to leave Bassmaster, Jonathan Van Dam, uh, Shaw Grigsby, Todd Faircloth, Stephen Browning, Tommy Biffle, Casey Ashley, Adrian Avina, Cliff Pace, Bradley Roy, Josh Bertrand, and Wesley Strader. That is Bassmaster that have left. Here's FLW that have left. Zach Burge, JT Kenny, Jason Lambert, uh, Michael Neal, Scott Suggs, Justin Atkins, Cody Meyer, Mark Rose, and I believe that's it so far that we know of from the FLW Tour. I guarantee you a few more got invites, and actually I've texted a few of them. I know they did get invites, and they are still deciding. And here's the Elite Series guys that got invites, uh, but decided to stay with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Chris Zaldane, Bill Lowen, Seth Fighter, and Drew Benton. And then the guys that we don't think got invited to the Bass Pro Tour are Keith Combs, Micah Frazier, Matt Heron, Chad Pippins, John Cruz, Brandon Card, Cliff Prince, Mark Menendez, and Clifford Perch. Uh, and then from the FLW Tour, Brian Thrift, which was a surprise to me, uh, to our knowledge, did not get a Bass Pro Tour invite. And so that, is, that leaves us with 62 anglers out of the 80 angler fields. So we're still waiting on 18 more to announce. Uh, I'll probably put a complete list down in the description below, or I'll just link this, this, uh, this list that I'm reading off of here. But from talking to people at Bassmaster, I have heard that Bassmaster has lost a lot of pros besides these, a lot of big name guys. So I'm just surmising that Bassmaster has lost Brandon Palanick, Justin Lucas, Jordan Lee, Matt Lee, probably some other you know, big names, maybe Dustin Connell, maybe Mark Daniels Jr. Uh, and then from the FLW Tour, I'm assuming Scott Martin, if he got an invite, will uh, leave FLW Tour. But FLW loves him a lot, so I don't exactly know what Scott's going to do. I haven't talked to him a whole lot about this decision yet. But that's a lot of huge names that have left Bassmaster. And it definitely comes as a shock to a lot of people, especially on social media. To see a lot of pros that I've grown up watching on the Elite Series, especially guys like Gerald Swindle and Kevin Van Dam and Tommy Biffle, those guys leave the industry and the, the company and you know, tour they've known so well to go somewhere else. It, it, it hurts, it really does. And, and I kind of discuss part of my opinion later, but the industry changes and these guys are embracing change and that's just kind of how it goes at this time. And so I'm gonna switch over to a portion of Ike Live, Mike Iaconelli's live show he does on YouTube once a week, where they discuss kind of uh, the, the current scenario, the state of pro bass fishing as he calls it, with a guy named Ken Duke who has worked in the fishing industry for a long, long time, knows every detail there is to know, and they actually have some cool things to say about what's been going on. We've got three players right now. We've got FLW, we've got BASS, we've got Major League Fishing, They've all got really good products. They've all got great anglers. Um, let, let me just start with the simple question. I, I, I asked Pete, I asked Brian, I asked Eric, I want to ask you. How, wh what's your opinion of the state of the sport? Are we better now than we were 5 or 10 or 15 years ago? Or are we, in, or are we worse off right now? Uh, I, I think in a lot of ways we're better off. I think the economy has made us better off, Mike, than we were 5 or 10 years ago. Yeah. But let me give you a, a, something that, that I know Pete and I have talked about in the past. 
I'll give you an example. In 1967, Ray Scott put on his first tournament. You guys were joking about I could tell you the dates and the times. It was June 5th, 1967 on Beaver Lake in Arkansas. He charged guys, he charged guys 100 bucks to enter, and first place was $2,000. That's a 20-to-1 ratio. Well, right now you're fishing you know, the Elite Series with BASS, and your entry fees are about 5000 bucks a tournament, and you have a chance to win 100. That's a 20-to-1 ratio. The ratios that you guys pay out for entry fees in 1967, 51 years ago, and the fees paid now are the same. The sport hasn't moved forward even an inch in that way. Wow. What has caused this? Why, 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 hasn't the, why hasn't the payout, why hasn't the angler's exposure, why hasn't sponsor relations, why haven't those things advanced over the years? Why have they stayed stagnant or decreased? I think because the sport hasn't grown. You know, it's really easy to say the sport has grown because you see a few more boats on the water, but that's kind of anecdotal evidence, Mike. That's not, those aren't real numbers. License sales this past year are up for the first time in over 20 years. Wow. And if, if you want to look at the peak of the sport in a lot of ways, financially at least, uh, I would point to the late 80s. Uh, in the late 80s, there were 55, 57,000 bass boats being sold each year. Do you know how many you know, fully rigged bass boats were sold last year? No. Maybe 8,000. Wow. And that's way up. That's way up. For wow. the past few years. So the sport's not getting bigger in, in a meaningful sense. Yeah. This is a, a phrase I use about our sport a lot, and I wish I didn't have to. I call it the big lie. You know, we talk about how many people bass fish, but when you really get right down to it, how many people do you know who bass fish, you know, out of a sixty or seventy-five thousand dollar boat, and they're right. they've got you know thousand dollar rod and reel combos, and they've got twenty thousand dollars worth of electronics on their boat? It's really yeah. a relatively small number. Yeah, and that's why we've only got a handful of boats being sold each year. What what happens to the Bassmasters and the FLW organization if that actually gets pulled off? Well, obviously, it's going to be a major hit to BASS because in the last seven or eight years, I think BASS has kind of put all of their eggs in the tournament basket. They don't really focus on anything anymore except tournaments, whether they be uh, Elite Series and the Bassmaster Classic or you're talking high school and college. They're all tournaments all the time these days. I think there is so much opportunity for any outlet, whether we're talking FLW, whether we're talking bass, to kind of get back to the roots that, that have, in many cases, been abandoned. Let's stop teaching an entire world that you have to have a $75,000 bass boat to catch one of these fish. If they can pull this off, if they can create this tournament circuit that has all of the superstars, that all of the people that everybody's interested in, I think what they're going to have to do is still find ways to show who's the very best, why they're the very best, and they're going to have to bring these people into everybody's home and show that they are stars. So with all that said, I think Mike Iaconelli and Ken Duke especially made a lot of really good points about you know the big lie about bass fishing and really what happens to bass after this. But you probably came here for my opinion. You probably watch my videos in general because you want to know what I have to say about things that happen in the industry. And so you probably want to know, Tyler, what do you think about this whole Major League Fishing Bassmaster chaos has been going off? What do I think about Major League Fishing? To be honest, I love it, and here's why. I love being a part of the social media fisherman group because we are on the forefront of teaching people not only how to fish, but introducing them to the industry. My goal is, of course, to get you guys to watch my videos, to learn more how to fish, but I want you guys to look up to myself and the Elite Series, and of course now Major League Fishing and FLW Pros, kind of for your inspiration. It's great that you watch YouTube videos, but I'm telling you this industry works from the top down and the top is the elite anglers, the best anglers in the world. That's what this industry is all about. Just like any other industry, you have the NFL, you have NASCAR, you have the PGA Tour. You're not looking up to YouTubers in that football space. You're looking up to, you know, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I don't know, I don't know many NFL people. And so from a pure content standpoint, what Major League Fishing is attempting to do with the live fishing on every boat during tournaments, the insane amount of TV hours they're having, this will hopefully vastly grow the industry as a whole. As Ken Duke talked about in that video with Mike Iaconelli, the industry, we may think that it's growing because we see more boats in the water and we see more kids fishing ponds, but the tournament professional industry is really not growing all that much. And I think that Major League Fishing could do a whole lot to help that industry grow. I think that it also widens the sponsor market. Um, you know, Bassmaster, 
for years and years, I, I look at pros jerseys and I rarely see many companies that digress from the fishing industry. And if they do, they're kind of fringe companies that you know fishermen and outdoorsmen, hunters are going to be involved and buy products and services from those companies. But we've never had many companies that completely come out of left field, out of the fishing industry to sponsor fishing. And so I think Major League Fishing has an awesome opportunity to help grow fishing across the country and around the world and invite sponsors in to make us like NASCAR or PGA. I'd say NASCAR especially. Now we can have companies wrapping our boats and having our jerseys like Microsoft, Tide, 3M, Lowe's, Home Depot. Companies that like you would never think would be on a fisherman's jersey, but because of the amount of exposure that angler will be getting on TV and on social media, companies have no excuse to not throw money at Major League Fishing. So I think that's also a huge thing. And also, I'm positive uh, about the change because it allows more people to fish professionally. It was my goal for so many years as a kid, and who knows, it might be still my goal, kind of deep, far deep in my mind, to fish professionally. And I'd say in a decade, if this goes well, you have three professional bass fishing tours that are all gonna have legendary anglers and well-known pros on all three. So I say just give it time. Right now, Bassmaster's gonna have to fill a lot of the spots they left with opens guys and you know the college winner, that kind of thing. I don't exactly know how Bassmaster's gonna fill those vacancies. I think it's an awesome opportunity to grow the professional sport of fishing around the world by adding another tour. And so many people are saying, well, Bassmaster just lost all, almost all their pros, and so they're definitely gonna go down the drain. Bassmaster's definitely gone. And so while I see that can be a thought, I think there's one huge flaw in that line of thinking. The fishing industry is not a single defined pie of opportunities. And if you're familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the term in economics called zero sum. Zero sum in economics basically means that whatever industry you're talking about is only a certain pie size. There's only a certain pie. It never gets bigger, never gets smaller. And so if you were to see Major League Fishing coming in and taking pros from both circuits, you could see that if you were thinking of fishing as a zero sum game, that MLF is basically stealing part of the pie from all these guys and, and hogging pieces of the pie for themselves. But fishing is not a zero sum game. Really, there's hardly any industries in the entire world, the planet, that are a zero sum game. Of course, it may take a few years to build this pie back to where it can be, and the pie of the fishing industry may taste quite bitter for a few years. Uh, but I think this is, again, an incredible opportunity to grow the sport of fishing not just around the country, but around the world. I think the more pros you have, the more companies that are bringing money into the industry to feed fishing around the world, I think it's gonna be incredible. And so I'm very, very optimistic about it. And so the largest critique that we see, especially on social media, about Major League Fishing, and honestly, this is the one that really makes me roll my eyes, is this. Major League Fishing is stupid because who wants to watch people catch small fish all day? And if you have watched the Major League Fishing show, you know the small fish play just as big of a role as big fish. They are weighed in the boat and they are released and they are added to your total weight. And so people are concerned and I'd say honestly kind of angry that Major League Fishing would not do a five fish limit format. They would continue to do this total weight format throughout the day or the three days of competition. And people are saying, I don't want to watch this. I want to see real fishermen. You know, real guys, the best guys, catch five big, ba five big bass, weigh them in at the end of the day. I'm sick of all this small fish crap. And so I have four answers to that concern uh, that I really think are very valid. The first is that MLF knows how to edit a TV show. So trust me, it'll probably be an exciting TV show. I doubt that you're gonna be super bored seeing guys catch 12 inch fish all day. I don't think that's gonna happen. Number two, if you're referring to a live fishing on both tours, both, or I guess three tours, Bass, FLW, or Major League Fishing, you already see every fish catch on Bass and FLW anyways. You already see every dink, every two pounder, and also every big fish. So I, I don't really quite understand that one. Number three is that the format of the original MLF show is 15 minutes of practice on an unknown lake that you've never been to before, then four hours to beat seven other guys to advance to the next round. Of course, you're not gonna catch eight pounders or search for eight pounders uh, in that format. You've gotta catch fish to beat the clock and to beat the other guys. Uh, but now I believe the tournaments are, once they release the schedule, the pros are gonna know exactly where they need to go. They can go pre-practice. They can have two full days of practice, and I think it's three days of competition. I could be wrong. I called my buddy about that, but he didn't, he didn't answer. So really, it's not gonna be a small fish format. Sure, you're gonna catch and weigh in more small fish, but I think you're still gonna see a lot of the guys that love targeting big bass are still gonna do that because catching an eight pounder or a 10 pounder in a tournament, especially this format, is going to really, really help your total weight. And the last thing that I have to say about this Number four is that people are so concerned that we're not going to see the best fishermen in the world anymore do what they do best. People are concerned that as soon as we in incorporate this format with the total weight, fishing quality is going to go down. 
Guys are saying, oh, anybody can go out and catch two pounders all day, but I wanna see guys catch a 35 pound mega bag. But the thing is, why have we defined who the best fishermen are by how many fish they catch? What, what, what has gone on in the past 50 years of tournament fishing? I understand that's how it's always been. Who are we to say that the best fishermen in the world are the guys that catch five bass all day, but they're five really, really big ones? Sure, that's the format that I've grown up understanding, knowing, and loving. And that is the format that I've had to abide by in high school fishing, college fishing, and you know, in future tournaments that I do, local tournaments. But who's to say that the best angler, the best you know, elite anglers are the guys that catch five big bass? That's one thing that I've been thinking about lately, is that why do we think that's the case? I've talked to hundreds of people over my years of fishing, both people that have bass fished before and people that are like, oh, you fish on YouTube? Like, what does that mean? Every single person I've talked to has the opinion that the guy who is better at fishing is the guy that catches more fish. If I was to take, let's say, my girlfriend out on the water to go fishing and we catch three big bass all day, I guarantee you she would have less fun and probably think less of me as a fisherman than if we caught 35 two to four pounders all day. And I know that's a weird thing for me to say out loud, uh, is that I don't think that the best fishermen necessarily are the guys that catch the biggest bass. That's just been the way this industry has always worked. And so that's kind of my two cents on how this whole Major League Fishing Bassmaster thing has evolved over the past few weeks. Is that, sure, I have concerns. I have concerns that we are going to lose Bassmaster. But I also have optimism that Bassmaster is going to continue to grow, Major League Fishing is going to grow, FLW is going to grow, and people are going to explode in their love and excitement and passion involvement for fishing around the world, especially the tournament scene. Because I think that's where this industry is going. I don't think an industry can survive purely based on recreational. I think if you look at the hunting industry, uh, you know, gaming industry, it all revolves around the highest end, highest hunting, highest gaming, that kind of flows down into the recreational. And that's where I see bass fishing going, is con continuing to build on the professional side of things. So what's gonna happen after this acquisition? Um, is Bassmaster going to lose the, the amount of pros that I mentioned? Are they gonna lose Palinik, the Lucas, uh, you know, Justin Lucas, the Lee brothers. Uh, honestly, who knows? It could be a catastrophic thing for the future of fishing, all this new money coming into it, all this new exposure. But I'm optimistic that it could be, I think, what propels our sport to be PGA and NASCAR proportions around the world. So I apologize for how long this video was, but it was definitely a lot of information to throw at you guys at one time. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below. Of course, all the links I described from the list of anglers that switched from their tours to Major League Fishing, the details on how Major League Fishing, Bassmaster, and FLW are going to work for next year, all that just will be linked below, as well as, as always, the products that I use in my videos from Rods Reels, clothing company, Lucky Tackle Box, all that kind of stuff will be linked below. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Woo, I'm tired. That was a lot.